Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but we're gonna talk about Larian Studios. We're gonna talk about Baldur's Gate 3 and uh, the cancellation, I guess, of Baldur's Gate 4. And we're gonna talk about Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and Dragons. And we did a video a couple days ago talking about how Hasbro said that uh, they were parting ways with Larian Studios, who of course did Baldur's Gate 3, which was a very damn good game. By all accounts, a very, very good seller, critically uh, praised, applauded, uh, you know, players love it. Uh, very, very much a win for the brand. And it was surprising that Hasbro and Wizards were gonna part ways with Larian. We thought that they were kicking Larian Studios to the curb, which would have been one of the dumbest moves ever and as it turns out larian is jumping ship so that that actually does make a lot of sense especially with everything going on around dungeons and dragons and magic currently i think larian knows the writing is on the wall and they're trying to save themselves they don't want to be tied to wizards of the coast and their dumbass decisions going forward that would that would be my interpretation of it. of course they're going to be corporate nice about it and they're going to say oh yeah you know we we loved working with you guys honest um but let's uh let's talk about this let's talk about the update we're going to talk about you know how wizards is celebrating the 50th anniversary of dungeons and dragons uh partially by throwing the creator and the creators of dungeons and dragons in the original campaign worlds under the wheels of the bus <laughs> we talked about that before too like not a not a good look guys Anyway, before you get to it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, no woohoos in this video. Geeky's sitting this one out. But this is coming from IGN. They did an update uh, this morning. Wizards of the Coast not to blame for Larian leaving Baldur's Gate 3 and D&D behind. Sven Vink insists. Is that how you pronounce his name? I don't know. He's the guy in charge of Larian. Following Larian's shock decision to move on from Baldur's Gate 3 and Dungeons and & Dragons, some fans have pointed the finger at Wizards of the Coast, but according to the CEO of, of Larian, the Hasbro-owned company is not to blame. They're, they're doing damage control. I think they're jumping ship. Last week, Larian confirmed it had no plans to release DLC or expansions for Dungeons & Dragons uh, role-playing game Baldur's Gate 3, and it indeed had no plans to make another video game set in the D&D universe, rolling out a Baldur's Gate 4 from that studio. Instead, it's making a brand new game. Now, they did do Divinity, which uh, I played years ago. It was very, very good. Very good game. Maybe they'll go back to that. Maybe it'll be uh, Divinity 3 or something. Following the news, some fans have expressed concern that Wizards of the Coast, which owns and operates Dungeons & Dragons, badly had caused Larian to walk away from the fantasy universe. Wizards is now owned by Hasbro, which issued a statement to IGN addressing the decision. And it was very corporate nice, right? Larian has been an incredible partner, and together we are proud of the success of Baldur's Gate 3. Watch this space for more and some awesome D&D games. We're bringing the life through Hasbro Studios and our network of licensing partners. Blah, blah, blah. Hasbro failed to respond to IGN's question about the future of Baldur's Gate now that Larian is moving on, nor did it say whether Wizards of the Coast plans to hand the license to a new developer. Baldur's Gate 3 has made some $90 million for Hasbro. That's kind of a drop in the bucket compared to, you know, I mean, it's a lot of money, but like compared to Hollywood, it's like, eh, whatever. It's an impressive sum, even as the company has struggled overall. In December, Hasbro announced a huge wave of layoffs. Yeah, Larian actually said that everybody they worked with at Wizards got laid off. They're, they're jumping ship. I'm telling you, they're, they're like, yeah, this is a sinking ship. Uh, following the news, uh, Vink, I think it's Vink or Vinky from Larian offered his condolences to the massive group of wizards workers affected by the cuts. I also want to thank wizards and specifically the Dungeons and Dragons team for giving us carte blanche. I'm really sorry to hear so many of you were let go. It's a sad thing to realize that the people who were in the original meeting room, that there's almost nobody left. I hope you all end up well. Again, that's not a good sign going forward because it sounds like they signed up to work on D&D under very different circumstances. Now, clearly mindful of the growing resentment toward Wizards of the Coast following Larian's announcement, uh, they issued a follow-up statement defending the company. Reading the Reddit threads, I'd like to clear something up. He said, WotC is not to blame for us taking a different direction. On the contrary, they really did their best and have been a great licensor for us, letting us do our thing. This is because that's what's best for Larian. 
Uh, some people have mentioned in the comments in the previous video, and I did not know he made this this statement at the time we recorded the other video that that uh, the licensing fees are probably very very high for D and D. That uh, you know he's not going to be working with the same group of people, so D and D is going to have their their new folks involved, and Hasbro's new folks involved, Chris Cox involved, and Cynthia Williams involved, and I don't know how that's going to go. They're not going to let them have carte blanche. I don't think. I don't think they're going to. Um, so that might be part of it. And also, as as we're going to point out, uh, Hasbro is a sinking ship at this point. Like, I would not want to tie my company's fortunes, uh, tether it to to that ship. It's it's on fire. It's sinking. Uh, I guess once it sinks, it won't be on fire anymore. But you get you get the idea, right? In an interview with IGN at GDC 2024. Uh, he revealed that Larian began work on Baldur's Gate 3 DLC and even gave some thoughts to a potential Baldur's Gate 4 before pivoting away to other projects because the team was going through the motions. You could see the team was doing it because everyone felt like we had to do it, but it wasn't coming from the heart. And we're very much a studio from the heart. It's what's gotten us into misery, and it's also been the reason for our success. Um, I think they weren't into it because I think Wizards was a very uh, is probably a very different place now than when they signed up. I don't know how many years this game was in development. I mean, Divinity 2 came out in what, like 2016, 2017? So it might have been, you know, five or six years in development. As Larry moves to new things, Hasbro is now left pondering what to do with Baldur's Gate and the incredible characters Larry created for Baldur's Gate 3. Don't touch it because you're going to fuck it up. Everything you touch, everything current year Watsy touches turns to shit. It's a good game. It will be remembered for years to come. Just just leave it alone. But they won't. We know they won't. They'll do a shitty mobile app, Baldur's Gate Go, or something like that. And that's that's they'll make a bunch of money off of it. You know, congratulations, you fucked the bear. You get all kinds of all kinds of uh, bonus currency for that. Um, does it draft in a new developer to take up the reins? Does it leave Baldur's Gate behind? And a tweet, uh, Vink. Past the torch, as for Baldur's Gate 3 and its characters, they now belong to Watsy. And I think they understand how important they are for the community. No, they don't. I trust they'll be treated with respect. No, they won't. They will not. Well, ask, ask the original creators of the campaign worlds that, that put D&D on the map. Ask the family of the creators of D&D. Ask the Gygaxes how, how uh, Watsy is going to treat current year D and D anything, they're gonna look at this thing and be like, "Okay, cool, Larian's out of the way. Microtransactions, bitches, constant live service DLC, microtransaction fever dream. You want to fuck a bear? That's four ninety nine, pal. Four ninety nine for every bear fuck. That's how it's gonna work. You want to go up a level? Up, you're gonna pay another ten bucks if you want to go up a level at bear fucking. What? What we do know is there are a number of uh, Dungeons & Dragons video games in development that are not Baldur's Gate 4. They're doing a new uh, Forgotten Realms. You know, again, is Ed Greenwood involved? No, I doubt it. (laughs) I doubt it. So this is how they're going to celebrate the 50th anniversary of D&D. And apparently this was a press-only thing that they did at uh, GaryCon. At GaryCon... Gary Con, what are we at? 16 in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, the hometown of problematic D&D co-creator Gary Gygax. Gaming publisher Wizards unveiled its product plans for the 50th anniversary of the revolutionary tabletop role-playing game. It's kind of insulting that they actually yeah, went to Gary Con, given some of the uh, treatment, disparaging comments that people associated with Dungeons and Dragons have, have made even recently about Gary Gygax and the origins of the game. And, uh, it's like, why would you want to be, why would you want to be there and fraternize with these, uh, straight white old middle-aged dudes from the flyover States, you know, these problematic, you know, problematic people. That uh, you know, we're we're gatekeeping the hobby, according to to some of the people working at Watsy. You know. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, the brand is releasing tie-in products that include fashion wear, like Converse sneakers and Hawaiian shirts, 
in a partnership with Lego for D&D sets. What the hell? It's just, it's just a IP now. It's Wizards' new gaming-centric books that really get the jubilations going. In a press-only presentation at GaryCon, Wizards of the Coast, rep by story designers Amanda Hammond, uh, Justice Armin, Jason Tondro, who's the guy who made the comments about the problematic origins of D&D, and Chris Perkins revealed more in-depth information. They have Vecna, Eve of Ruin, a high-level campaign in which players must stop the Dark Lich Vecna because something, something, Stranger Things, popular now. Yeah. Uh, Perkins says all the books for D&D's 50th tie so closely to the past, present, and future of D&D. Um, so they have Vecna, Eve of Ruin, as seen on Stranger Things. Uh, quest from the Infinite Staircase. I don't know if you can roll your battle wheelchair up that staircase or not. but uh, No, actually, I didn't do a video on the battle wheelchair thing because I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I'm going to be honest. I don't think it's that big of a deal uh, personally, and I get that you know, there, you know there's magic and there's this and there's that, whatever. But, like, I, I don't care. That, that doesn't really bother me too much. I, I know that, that it was kind of strange, though, with Ravenloft, where they were like, they had guys like rolling up the stairs and stuff. I'm like, put some spider legs on it or something. That makes a little, little more sense. But, you know, whatever. Whatever. Um, revised core rule books. Uh, you know, they're going to do a new Dungeon Master's Guide, new Player's Handbook, new Monster's Manual. Of course, these are coming out uh, next year. But they're going to be like 5E e and a half. Like D&D 1 is apparently just 5.5, I guess. The new revised core rule books officially designated by parentheses in 2024 are not burning down the game, but taking books that are many people's first steps into the worlds of imagination and make them more accessible, easier to reference, content easier to find, and be more useful at the game table. Overall, each revised book features uh, user interface improvements, new art, and other things. New art, probably AI-generated, and other things people have been asking for. Um, Perkins didn't say much more on that particular subject, though he did tease an upgrade to the weapons system. Watch them just go back to things that worked better in, like, 3.5. <laughs> uh, other changes include a total rearranging of how it dishes out information. They confirm the book will first inform players how to play D&D before creating a character. Character creation will also ask... They did this before. This is how the basic set was. Like, seriously. Like, you guys are just... God. It's the 50th... An so for the 50th anniversary of D&D, we're going to go back to what worked about, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago. There we go, guys. Character creation will also ask players to select a class before their species, formerly race and background. Uh, Perkins said the characters from the cult classic D&D animated series from the 80s appear as illustrations and aged up so they're no longer children because that's problematic. The gear also appears in the handbook with stats. <sighs> it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they're really milking the animated series now because they know that people love that. But that again, that was the thing created in a different time uh, by people that Gave more of a shit, I think, than Watsy does. And actually, Ernie Gygax had a lot to do with that. And, and he's been completely shut out of Wizards at this point. You know, it's just, it's, it's weird. The making of the original Dungeons & Dragons, again, this is the problematic book. So they're going to celebrate the 50th anniversary by celebrating, uh, celebrate it by tearing down the people that created it, I guess. I don't know. Oh, God. Uh, this is coming from The Gamer. It's only fitting someone else handles Baldur's Gate 4. That's true. Larian did not do 1 and 2. But uh, I don't think 4 is going to be any good. I think it's going to be a cash grab. Because this is the state of Hasbro right now. They're not doing well. Uh, we have Chris Cox out there saying that it's all about the brand and uh, AI and uh, monetization and microtransactions. And all. This is a Microsoft guy. This is how he thinks. And you know it's going to be a shit show because they have, they have something, so they're going to choke the life out of it, right? And uh, But this, again, might throw a little kerosene on the fire that Tencent could potentially get involved in D&D, that Larian is an open out. I don't know. I'm just saying. I, I've, I've been hearing this for years, that Tencent was a potential 
purchaser of the D&D IP or at least licensor of it and that they were going to make shitty mobile apps. And the shitty mobile app part happened or is happening and it's going to happen with a virtual tabletop. Uh, I, I do believe Hasbro wants to be out of the physical game business, the physical toy business. I think before it's all said and done, they will license everything out. That Super 7 and Basic Fun will make their toys. McFarlane will make their toys and because they want to apparently do it. They want to take a risk on it. And that they will just uh, you know outsource their tabletop games to like Paizo or somebody. You know, somebody that wants to actually make tabletop games. You know, Ravensburger. Who knows? Um, I could see them doing that because they clearly do not want to be a toy company. They want to be an IP license holder. At least Chris Cox does. And if they want to save the company, they, they get rid of Chris Cox and Cynthia Williams because um, they're, they're burning it down in real time, guys. They are. I'm sorry. I think I think whatever goodwill is left uh, from Wizards, I think the Larian thing, they're being all nice about it, corporate nice about it. But basically, Larian does not want to work with Wizards. And nobody seemingly wants, seemingly wants to work with wizards anymore. So I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later.